Okay, so this question on tuberculosis, slightly unusual, will provide you some value here. I'll try to be real fucking concise, okay? Not make this a 17-minute clip. Now, in durations, you do not need to know for step one. You do need to know them for 2CK. Greater than 5 millimeters in duration is positive in those who have HIV AIDS, uh, those who are uh, uh, organ transplant recipients because they'll be on immunosuppressant agents, uh, those who have calcifications on chest x-ray, and those who've had close contact with patients with active TB. Greater than 5 millimeters in duration, that's positive for a PPD test. Greater than 10 millimeters is positive for uh, those who are TB laboratory personnel, children under the age of four, immigrants, such as this patient here. So he has a positive PPD at 12 millimeters. Also healthcare workers, prisoners, uh, prison workers, okay? Greater than 15 millimeters in duration is positive for everybody else. Um, erythema does not count. It's just the induration. Never fucking repeat a positive PPD test. It'll always be positive. If you get like a, if you, if you get a question where they say the PPD test is positive, how long do you need to wait? One week, two weeks, three weeks before repeating it? You don't repeat it. It's a trick. If you have a negative PPD, you have to wait at least a week before repeating it. Now, if the patient has a positive PPD test, the next best step in management is to do a chest x-ray. Now, I was an unremitting asshole and put a normal chest x-ray here. I literally typed into Google normal chest x-ray, and then I jacked this image off of Wikipedia, okay? So if you have a positive PPD followed by a negative chest x-ray, the next best step is, quote, treat for latent TB, or, quote, give TB prophylaxis. They are the same thing for USMLE, and that's isoniazid for nine months plus B6, almost always. That's the default, okay? There are alternative regimens. Uh, for example, I wrote here nine months, so we know specifically I'm talking about isoniazid, so there's no fucking confusion because isoniazid for nine months plus B6, isoniazid can cause B6 deficiency, which presents as neuropathy, uh, seizures, paresthesias, numbness. So you have to give B6 pyridoxine with isoniazid, okay, always. That's really high yield for USMLE. So isoniazid for nine months plus B6 is treat for latent TB, TB prophylaxis, or you can do rifampin for four months, or you can do uh, isoniazid plus rifapentine for three months, okay? And because there are those three regimens technically, uh, as I said, I was very fucking clear here with the nine months. So this patient received isoniazid for TB prophylaxis because of his negative chest x-ray, following a positive PPD. If you have a positive chest x-ray after your positive PPD, instead you're gonna treat for active TB, which is gonna be ripe for two months, followed by RI for four more months. That's six months total. So rifampin, isoniazid, uh, pyrazinamide, ethambutol uh, for two months, followed by rifampin, isoniazid for four more months. That's six months total. That's active uh, treatment, okay? Yes, there's alternatives. Some students will be like, what about streptomycin? Okay, like there are alternatives that you don't need to worry about for USMLE, all right? It's just um, this patient received isoniazid. I want to stay concise. And we merely ask which of the following is a potential adverse effect. I already talked about how B6 deficiency can occur if you don't give pyridoxine, all right? Uh, and that's neuropathy. Very high yield, but I didn't make that the point of this question. So we look, let's go through these answer choices one by one. Choice A, blue-green haze. Wrong fucking answer. That refers to sildenafil, which is a phosphodiesterase inhibitor. Literally Viagra, okay? It can cause blue-green haze. Ethambutol, which can be, which is part of the active TB regimen, can cause red-green color blindness. It can cause central scotoma. It can cause uh, blurry vision, optic neuritis, okay? But blue-green haze is sildenafil, uh, Viagra. Choice B, decrease serum bicarbonate, is the correct answer. And you say, hmm, what the fuck? Well, think about this. This is going to be real fucking interesting and clear in about two seconds. Mud piles are mnemonic for high anion gap metabolic acidosis. The I refers to iron tablets or isoniazid. And you're like, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, 
not fucking difficult, but it's like a little bit interesting, right? Slightly unusual. You're like, oh, decreased serum bicarb, metabolic acidosis. Okay, so isoniazid. It. It's one of the it's one of the mud piles. Uh, high anion gap, metabolic acidosis, methanol, uremia, uremia is renal failure. D DKA, uh, P fenformin, some weird drug you don't have to worry about. I isoniazid, iron tablets. L lactic acidosis. E ethylene glycol, which is antifreeze. S salicylates, which is aspirin can cause high anion gap metabolic acidoses. We calculate anion gap by adding the serum chloride and bicarb, taking that number, and then subtracting it from the sodium. And if it's 13 or greater, that's considered high anion gap. 8 to 12 is normal. So that's our answer here. Decrease serum bicarbonate for isoniazid. Increase serum TSH, wrong fucking answer. Uh, just threw that in there for kicks. Isoniazid can cause hepatotoxicity. That's important. Uh, but uh, I, I Googled it just to be, just to double check that it's not some weird adverse effect I haven't heard of associated with isoniazid, but no, isoniazid is not classically associated with any type of thyroid dysfunction. For USMLE, you need to know lithium and amiodarone as your two drugs that classically cause uh, thyroid dysfunction. Red-orange tears refers to rifampin, okay? And as I mentioned before, rifampin can technically be given for four months as a prophylactic regimen for TB, for treatment for latent TB. But uh, I was clear here, the patient got nine months of therapy, so it was isoniazid, not rifampin. But rifampin can cause red-orange bodily secretions, uh, tears, sweat, okay, uh, urine. It's a benign finding. They can, the USMLE can turn this into a behavioral science question, OMG, right? Where they'll say uh, the patient uh, is worried about the, the red uh, orange color of the urine. And then your, your most appropriate response to the patient is like, it's a benign finding, don't worry, uh, of rifampin. Serotonin syndrome, just wrong answer. It's just, ooh, wow, serotonin syndrome, okay? Um, so serotonin syndrome is classically associated with giving um, monoamine oxidase inhibitors uh, too quickly after discontinuing an SSRI, okay? It can also be associated with St. John wort. If someone's taking St. John wort at the same time as they're taking uh, an SSRI, that can precipitate a serotonin syndrome. Tramadol is a drug that can cause serotonin syndrome, okay? Uh, uh, Linizolid, which is a 50S ribosomal subunit inhibitor, uh, more of a weird drug, that can also cause a serotonin syndrome. So we can make this a 45-minute discussion, talk about all the little details about every little thing, okay? But I, I just wanted to stay concise here. So your take-home is isoniazid. It can cause uh, B6 deficiency, presenting as neuropathy, it can cause high anion gut, metabolic acidosis, it can cause hepatotoxicity, okay? It can also inhibit P450, um, and it's a mycolic acid synthesis inhibitor, isoniazid. Don't worry, relax. I'll make other questions on all the fun details, okay? Um, and if you liked this, if you liked my content here, subscribe to my channel and I appreciate your time. That's it.